And now, America's Midweek Review. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Midweek Review. I am your news anchor, Yanni, and uh, here to provide you guys with all the great news um, uh, midweek through. Uh, every single week, uh, to the best of my ability, giving a little bit of my touch and my opinion added in there as well. Uh, just before we get started here, just want to let you guys know you can find also uh, these episodes as well at the American's Voice over on SoundCloud and also on um, uh, Instagram and also Parlor as well. And you can find us right there. You go over and check us out and uh, it'll be a fantastic time. Uh, but glad to have you guys along this week. Uh, got a lot of stuff to tear into, uh, lots of things to digest uh, And uh, as I'm actually feeding it to you guys. So get ready. And I hope you guys have the little bibs on and those great things like that. Uh, but, but, on, but on to the news, though. I, I want you guys to understand and note that I have these, these Megalodon. Uh, you guys see the movie, right? These Megalodon size reservations. Uh, but have no fear, you guys. Uh, the great giveaway um, with the Democratic National Convention this week. Uh, the great giveaway is it's underway in the Democratic Party. Um, I, I just want to know just something to think about for everybody. Is Santa invited? Is do are we going to have a presence from the old great Saint Nick? Hell no. You know <laughs> they can outgive Saint Nick if you think about it by a billion to one. But let the show begin. All your same cast of characters and all the actors, um, all your favorite actors, they're here making their appearance um, in what I call a, a semi-glooming. And I'm attempting to give, at best all the time, uh, straight down the middle observations of what the news is and what's going on to keep everyone involved as we're tracking and moving. But to me, it was, it's, it's gloomy and, and, you know, sort of boring, uh, sleepy. I think someone should be popping no dose um, because it is very, very necessary and needed. But two nights into the Democratic National Convention uh, and viewers, you know, stuck at home during the coronavirus pandemic appear to be tapped out. They're totally tapped out. The viewership for the first and second nights in which we're on night, uh, night three tonight of the Democratic Convention fell dramatically from the same time uh, frame in 2016 when the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton led in the Democratic pr uh, presidential ticket. And this is here over at the Washington Washington Examiner. According to the Nielsen Media Research, only six point thirteen uh, million people tuned in. And, you know, people still say that's a lot of that. You know, that's a, oh, that's a lot of people. Well, simulcast. Uh, it was on uh, CBS, ABC, NBC during the first two nights of the 2020 convention, uh, marking 48, marking a 48 percent drop from four years ago. The Nielsen reported the first two nights of the convention featured speeches by the first lady, Michelle Obama. Uh, we're going to get off into a lot of that stuff. Former President Bill Clinton and also uh, Alessandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC. She made her um, venomous appearance as well for like 60 seconds or so. Uh, Joe Biden accepted the party's nomination on Tuesday with his wife, Jill Biden, by his side. And it's so weird as I was looking at that little celebration that they had there. There were like the little balloons there. And I don't know, were they in like a DVD place? I heard Rush talking about it, too. But it looks like they're at all these DVDs and stuff in there. And with the DVDs, there was balloons, little colorful balloons. And they had these two strange looking out of place chairs. They look like something that should be on the I, I BS you not. Look at the picture. It looks like something that should be on uh, the Star Trek on the deck with the captain in the big screen right there. Um, but, yeah, it's, it was just weird and awkward. But I sense from both parties, as I'm refereeing both sides, the Democratic Party and also the Republican Party, as I look at both sides here, um, the Democratic Party has no energy. They're lacking the energy that they need to make an effective message out there, I believe, to the voters. Uh, yesterday, we had Bernie Sanders spilling the beans on uh, Joe Biden. And this is funny. This is a time where Bernie Sanders becomes the ventriloquist and Joe Biden is the dummy. Just picture him. He's sitting right there on his lap, you know, like a little small Joe Biden type dummy doll sitting there. And there goes uh, Bernie Sanders, which makes me think about chicken. He's there and he's pulling the strings. I want you to hear a little bit of what he said Joe Biden is going to do, um, which puts him in the chair and Joe Biden on his lap. Cut one, please. I know that Joe Biden will begin that fight on day one. 
Let me offer you just a few examples of how Joe will move us forward. Joe supports raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Hmm. This will give 40 million workers a pay raise and push the wage scale up for everyone else. Wow, what a pie in the sky and a utopia that everyone wants to live in. $15 an hour minimum wage. Oh, great, guys. Great. That's going to really solve all of America's problems, economical, spiritual, and also psychological. What is your philosophy? Um, but <laughs> if you raise the minimum wage, and this is just one quick thing that Joe Biden's going to do as he's being spoken through by Bernie Sanders, is you're going to make that $4 hamburger go up to about $7 because you're definitely paying your employees more money, right? So, I mean, you can keep the price the same, right? No, that those costs has to be forwarded somewhere. You know, kind of like the mail that you get that's the wrong mail. You forward it out back to the mailbox. They send it back to you again. Let me tell you about some mail that came to my house over and over and over again. I put it there. They don't live here. You write on the little letters. You put it inside the mailbox and they keep coming. I mean, what a crazy, crazy world. And they talk about trying to save the post office. It, it is almost a lost cause. But let's continue. Joe will also make it easier for workers to join unions, create 12 weeks of paid family leave, fund universal pre-K for three and four year olds and make child care affordable for millions of families. Joe will rebuild our crumbling infrastructure and fight the threat of climate change by transitioning us to 100 percent clean electricity over the next 15 years. Oh, oh, did you guys catch that? Did you guys catch? I don't think you caught that over the next 15 years, the clean energy argument that they're using at first it was 10 years. You remember Ocasio-Cortez um, or, or Ocasio-Complex, you know, it's the world's going to end in 12 years if, or something like that. She said, idiots. But what he said, though, basically 15 years, what Democrats are good at, or they're good at moving the post, moving the goalpost. And they got caught with their hands in the cookie jar once again. And you, did, yo, you didn't do it. What, what, you got chocolate chips on the side of your face. Holy smokes. Um, and AOC, speaking of AOC, she was at the Democratic Convention, too, as well, uh, endorsing Bernie Sanders at the DNC. She fires off these bonkers socialism wish list. And she had like 60 seconds is what she had. But I'm going to tell you what <laughs> the thing that stood out to me when she was talking, she was calling and endorsing. And seconding the motion, kind of like the Smokey Robinson song back then, second that emotion. Yeah, she was doing that for the president. And, and this is good. I'm going to no. <laughs> Should I tell I'm going to tell him. Should I tell him? I, I'm going to I'm going to let you guys listen to this here. This is AOC speaking at the Democratic Convention. And this is cut number two. Play it, please. In fidelity and gratitude to a mass people's movement working to establish 21st century social, economic, and human rights, including guaranteed health care, higher education, mm -hmm. living wages, mm -hmm. and labor rights for all people in the United States. She goes on to say, for all people in the United States, labor rights, these, you can't go work a job unless you go and fill out like 10,000 forms and yay, nay, yes, no, did you do this? Oh, what, um, have you ever had sex with a man? All these questions they have to make sure that you are not discriminating against your fellow American. And just like that windbreaker sweepstakes giveaway, they are United giving away States. the farm. Continue. A movement striving to recognize and repair the wounds of racial injustice, colonization, misogyny, and homophobia. And to propose and build reimagined systems of immigration and foreign policy that turn away from the violence and xenophobia it. Okay, stop, of our past. Stop, stop, please, stop. Th this is the wish list. And... No one seems to ask the question is, who's going to pay for this? That's a good question. That is something for everyone to think about. That's what I say. So that's her wish list. Let's see who else was on the itinerary at the convention. Uh, one thing I'm going to tell you that wasn't there was a conservative. But we had some rhinos there and I'm going to focus on them in just a second. But Pocahontas, she strikes again, too. And she is everywhere. And once you always think, like the president said, you think she's down and she's like a phoenix. She comes back like a boom, which is absolutely fantastic, too, as well. But she's on there and 
they put her in the classroom. It's the setting that I see when I'm uh, looking at the speech, listening to the speech. And on Fox News, she touts Biden as a really good man. And I notice everyone that's speaking about Biden, they're talking about he's a good man. Like he needs a resume or something or a reference. That's what it's like. It's like a big reference uh, convention is, is what I see. And also, too, it it also reminds me of a movie that I saw once before. Casper, the friendly ghost. But it is a ghost of Christmas past, it seems, because when I see who pops up, Bill Clinton, um, you have John Kerry, you have all John Kasich, which he's not really that old, but he is old news. Um, just when they start to talk, you don't you hear the, the chains clanking in the background? Yeah, there are chains in the background as they are speaking. And Warren, she touts Biden's really good plan, says Trump failed miserably on coronavirus. And I have a question for all those armchair quarterbacks out there, including Pocahontas, who is a fake Indian who on yesterday uh, did uh, they did these little rooms, these conference rooms. And it was out to the Native uh, American community. And I'm like, you are still holding on. You need to let go. You know, one thing it's bad about a liar is a liar that keeps on telling a lie or keeps telling a story with hopes that as you bury your face in your pillow, one day you'll wake up and the story will be true. No, Miss Pocahontas, it isn't. So over at FoxNews.com, she's given her a little spill and it's almost just mechanical. You think that Hillary Clinton is mechanical. Miss Warren is mechanical as well. Senator Elizabeth Warren wants a Democratic presidential nominee. Joe Biden's fiercest opponent, with exception of Kamala Harris or Kamala, during the primary season praised the former vice president's really good plans. You know, it's really good. See, that's like the coronavirus not affecting people that are out there protesting. If you're protesting, you are fine. The coronavirus did not touch you because you're just you're good. But if you attempt to go to church and fellowship, the coronavirus is right there waiting at the door with you on the also the ledger, too. Oh, come on in. Yeah, I got you. Yep, absolutely. Bring all your old parents to uh, Governor Cuomo. Just saying. Um, but he has really good plans during the speech at the Democratic National Convention. I love a good plan. And it's amazing. She had all types of plans that she had no clue of how it was going to be paid for. And it's so funny. You can duck and dodge and bob and weave shuck and jive for a time but when it comes to the rules of politics you will be figured out sooner or later and once she unveiled her plans on the health care she was laughed out of the building she was tarred and feathered and she sunk like a stone but she says i love a good plan how could you recognize a good plan if you never had one, Mrs. Warren? But I love a good plan. And Joe Biden has some really good plans, plans to bring back union jobs and manufacturing and create new union jobs and clean. You know what's so funny about that? Everyone is saying what Joe is going to do, but I have not really heard Joe with a robust message or voice say that to the American people. And us as Americans, we should have the opportunity to have our president or prospective president out there speaking and talking to us. <laughs> that takes me to another note a side note a little prematurely which is okay um let, let's play let's play a little game here real quick first of all and, and then i'm gonna get to i'm gonna get to john case for a second there but let, let's play a game questions mm, yeah let, let's do this one let's say if we had questions from the media and and you had contestant number one ding 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 so let's say since march let's let's make that let's paint this picture like this but you have contestant number one since march and i'm not gonna tell you who is he's been hiding in a bunker in a basement and don't t i'm not gonna tell you who is but how many questions have you been asked by the media i was wondering about that and then you have to think about the other guy the big orange man that is the ogre trolling back and forth on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, making everyone's life in this country a living hell. You burn up in a bed of flames that you say that he made for you and it repeats like Groundhog's Day and you are turning, skewering on those bed of flames with spikes embedded to as well. And so I found this and I thought it curious to bring this up too, since we are in the brunt of an election season. If you're going to be exposed to wanting to run for the highest office in the land and become the most powerful man on the planet, you want to make sure that I can vet you and you need to be vetted up and down like a ladder. Not talking about Jacob's ladder. That's a spooky prospect right there. But over at Fox News, I caught an article here and it's talking about the comparisons 
talking about the ogre or the troll in the White House and Joe Biden. Da, 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 da. Yep. S- a study finds Trump took 700 percent more questions than Biden over the month long period. Now, the numbers I'm going to break down well, that I, I spoke on earlier, the, the 34 versus the 1,800. I'm talking about tough questions. I'm talking about mediocre questions. I'm talking about average everyday questions. When you go to the coffee shop and someone asks you for some coffee or I mean, if you want coffee and you'll say, no, that's a simple question. Those are the softball uh, Melanie Keach type questions that are lodged at the Biden campaign. But that 34 questions is over a, a, a three month period, I think from March till present day. But Trump is out there all the time. And I want the American people to look at the obvious 1,800 questions from the media taken from the media incoming from the media. Um, he has armor on and everything. And he takes it every single day incoming former vice president failed to appear on any Sunday shows on the eve of the Democratic convention, which is normally a norm. President Trump has taken 555 more questions from the reporters than the presumptive 2020 Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. That is something to think about, too, as well. Since mid-July, as pressure mounts for the former vice president to face the media, according to a new study, Biden has been criticized for weeks for declining to sit down with reporters for unscripted interviews. Well, unscripted interviews, I mean, off the cuff. Yeah, that's really funny. So that's something to think about, guys. He's not asking questions. And you have to ask yourself, how long will this go on? How long will the media field and do um, uh, covering for the Biden campaign? Yes, you know, the Democrats are the media. The media are Democrats. They're all one and the same. So that is the truth there. I'm going to get off into more news once we come back on the other side of the break and we're going to continue to dissect the news on the midweek review i am your host here and thanks for coming along see you in one minute everyone uh, to the midweek review and we are going to continue to move along and dig into weekly topics that are affecting us in the United States of America um, but other people going on the, the the ghost list I mean the guest list of the National Democratic Convention uh, we had some crossovers you see um, crossovers you see you know remember those old movies when they were uh, sticking people up you know, I'm, I'm gonna give you a matching pair of cement shoes you see right you know and you, you get them like that but John Kasich, the, the great John Kasich of Ohio, the, the ex-governor, he's looking for redemption, trying to find himself in a pool of Democrats, in a sea of uh, people who are going contrary to what the conservative message is that John says he stands for. They're pleading for everyone to come together. Mr. Kasich, that is not going to happen. I am so sorry for that. Then we have Bill Clinton, and he was as white as a ghost. Um giving lectures on how the Oval Office should be operated in as his behavior while he was there was less than stellar. That's really calling the kettle black, right? The pot calling the kettle black. But you hear the media and they're out there in the pot. They're deluded. The observations of the convention, they are all, ooh, every last one of them are in the tank for Joe Biden. So I say, here's a proposition. Let's add some of that S. Remember that gas fuel additive cleaner? Let's add it to this tank and flush them all out in November. He receives the nomination. And as you're looking at that, as I was talking about earlier, they got cool in the gang playing in the background. Celebrate. What? What, what year are we living in? I'm, no Cardi B. You know, you got interviewed by her. Uh, so that's just something to think about, too. But the media is finding all over 
this Biden candidacy. And there is complete there is a complete lack of enthusiasm, excitement, and there is not an open eye in the room. In fact, there are teddy bears and nightcaps everywhere. People are sleeping. And, but on the other hand, Trump reminds everyone of the true Obama while he's trashing Trump at the DNC. You know, that's another thing I was meaning to say, too, as well. And this is just an observation of someone that is sitting right down the middle looking at both sides. It has been a Trump trash fest. While Obama was trash, trashing Trump at the DNC tonight, and I do mean trashing, accusing Trump of not taking the job seriously and being unable to grow into the job because he can't. Blah, blah, blah. You know all this real. Anyway, and this is over at uh, therightscoop.com, by the way. While he was doing that, Trump was reminding everyone of the true Obama that we all know and loathe. He spied on my campaign and got caught. That right there is like, drop the mic. You, know, you hear the mic get dropped, right? And that's exactly what he did when he said by Twitter. That's really the bottom line um, at this point. As horrible as Obama was as president, he ended it by doing what he always did to his enemies, that he spied on them. Remember how this administration spied on journalists? They never bring that up anymore because they've all forgiven their their heroes leftist president. They forgive them all the time. Tonight, Obama was trying to capitalize on what his administration did to weaken Trump in 2017 and convince voters that Trump shouldn't be reelected. That's why he simply cannot let Joe win. I don't care how much Trump annoys you unless you want Obama, Biden and his brown shirt spies to win. You must vote for Trump. It's honestly that simple to me right now. And that's over at Right Scoop. You can read the whole article there. And Trump sent out another tweet. Why did he refuse to endorse endorse Slow Joe until it was all over? And even when it was very late, why did he even try to get him not to run? Obama never wanted Joe. He wanted a more radical socialist like Warren or uh, Bernie. Uh, But he got stuck with Joe. Sleepy, sleepy Joe. But on to other bits of news um, off of the campaign trail for a second. But on to Goodyear. They're a fan of diving noses, apparently. That's what I say. You know, nose dives, diving noses, all the same to me. Over at the Federalist, Goodyear stock prices nosedive after company endorses Black Lives Matter, bans employees from saying Blue Lives Matter. This is what's going on in the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. Trump tweeted today, don't buy Goodyear tires. They announced a ban on MAGA hats. Get better tires for less. This is what the radical left Democrats do. Two can play the same game, and we have to start playing that same game now. Trump has been a fan of not boycotting for the longest point of time, but the tactics that the other party used, the Democrat Party uses, Trump is saying you have to use their same tactics against them. In a sense, fight fire with fire. Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company stock prices plummeted more than 4% Wednesday after President Donald Trump called for a boycott of the company for a reported zero tolerance policy on Make America Great Again hats and Blue Lives Matter messages. My question to everyone before I continue is, does Blue Lives Matter if they're a person and if they're black, if they're in a blue uniform or a brown uniform? I've seen ugly police uniforms before and you call them the men in brown. Not the best uniforms, but I still salute them. A photo posted on Twitter showed a slide allegedly part of a good year's diversity training that listed appropriate slogans and the organizations that might be showcased for the employees attire. And the acceptable column is Black Lives Matter and lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender pride. Uh, While statements such as Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, MAGA attire, the political affiliated slogans or material are deemed unacceptable. This is what they are trying to do. And if you go to thefederalist.com, you'll see it, the zero tolerance policy. And it is actually the one team Goodyear uh, employee policies. And they tell you what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. The hijacking of the United States of America, it is still in play and still active today. These corporate uh, giants, they are on the wrong side of history. And so they will get their due. So don't buy get your tires. Um, go and shop for something else. That's what I say. Scott Israel, the repugnant, uh, smug, uh, condescending um, ex-sheriff of Broward County, uh, loses his bid. Over at Fox News, sheriff claims victory over predecessor fired after Parkland. You guys remember the Parkland massacre? Uh, that that psycho wh- whose name I will not say, uh, but the handling of the massacre back in 2018. And um, it says Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the incumbent Gregory Tony claimed victory Tuesday night in the race for the Democratic nomination of Broward County Sheriff. 
in a campaign centered around the high school massacre and shootings uh, a decade earlier. Tony was named sheriff in 2019 after Governor Ron DeSantis fired predecessor Scott Israel over his handling of the 2018 massacre at, Major- uh, uh, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School that left 17 dead. You guys remember that was a horrible thing. Tony issued a statement Tuesday night saying that he had defeated Israel in the Democratic primary in the county where the Democrats hold a 2-1 edge over the GOP and registered voters. So go check that out over at The Federalist. I encourage you guys to do so. Um, my wife says this. She says, if you want to watch a scary ass movie, just watch America. That's what she says. For some reason, I've been feeling restricted and, you know, it's been hard for me to breathe these darn glasses. They keep fogging up for some reason. This strange phenomenon happened about four months ago and or so. And, you know, it's like a horrible cold. You know, I got Vicks and Sudafed and, you know, this fed, that fed, Theraflu, you know, I'm making my rounds. <laughs> And as I gaze down at my nose, I'm restricted by a facial muzzle. What am I a dog? Am I going to the vet? I mean, what the hell's going on around here? Do I have a case of rabies? No, it's this darn mask. And like me, people are losing it. But people are going to the extreme measures and they're flipping their cotton picking tops like a popcorn lid. Butter and salt, everyone. Which brings me to this. The Mask Vigilante. Over at the Daily News dot com. Woman trashes face mask displays. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Face mask displays at Target uh, in Arizona. And this lady is going ballistic. Okay. A woman filmed herself trashing the face mask display at Scottsdale in Arizona, a Target. And the woman screams, I'm not doing it anymore. And screams, the store lets everyone else do it. After staffers try to stop her, um, she goes off. Uh, I'm not playing anymore. These effing games, these effing games, it's over. This lady is at the precipice and at the brink of losing her mind. Here's a little bit of the clip, and she is going off. Um, Clip three, please. Shit, fucking over. This shit's over, 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 this shit's over. And she is demolishing the Target store, and the employees are standing around like, what in the world is going on? She is losing her mind like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Over at Fox News, Indian man attacks female employee who asked uh, for him to put a face mask on. Surveillance show him pulling a woman to the floor. Yeah, he was dealing with her too by the hair. You know, like the caveman days. Oonga Booga guy has this big old giant, this this big giant like bat of a made out of wood or stone back in the day. And, he, and they would blop the lady over the head and he's pulling him to the house and she becomes his wife. A local government official in India beat a female employee with a chair leg after yanking her to the floor by her hair, all because she asked him to put a mask on, according to the reports Tuesday. Shocking surveillance video shows Delore Tourism Boss C. Bashkar rushing towards the 43-year-old woman as she sits at her desk, minding her own business. He pulls her hair to the floor and yanks her around by the hair in the front of her staff. It is absolutely crazy. And, he, and people are standing there. They're all old, too, kind of like the Democrat convention. And it's just amazing. The content is graphic, but go over there and check that out, guys. This stuff is happening all over the place. Mass hysteria. Mask hysteria is what I, I call it. On the Chicago, we've been keeping an eye on Chicago, too, as well. And 15 shot on Tuesday alone in Mayor Lightfoot's Chicago. And she is in complete delusion on what's going on. She has no clue. The Chicago Sun-Times reports on Tuesday, uh, fatality was a 42-year-old man who was shot in the head in the middle of the afternoon. He was in the 93 block of 9300 block of South Halstead Street when he was shot and pronounced dead at the scene. The Sun Times reported Mayor Lightfoot Chicago saw over 20 people shot on Monday and two fatally. It's like a a, a grinding machine, a chopping machine. The first Monday uh, of fatalities was a 29 year old Kevin Garcia who was shot in a drive by incident about 12:50 a.m. on the 2400 block of South Trumbo Avenue. He was taken to the hospital where he died. Monday's second fatality was an 18 year old who was shot and killed at 11:45 p.m. on the 1700 block of North Aluma Lane. The 18 year old and another individual were shot when multiple people. Um, got out of a white sedan and opened fire. It is truly the Wild Wild West and it's something worth praying for in Chicago and pray that that mayor is voted out as well. Portland has their own concerns. There was a guy that was beating there a few days ago, beaten badly, kicked in the head, kicked in the face and knocked unconscious. So keep an eye on those two cities there, which have been the epicenter of Black Lives Matter and Antifa doing lots and lots of dirt. But 
On to some serious music news. Uh, Jam Master J, he was murdered in 2002. And after 20 years of disappointment and dead ends, authorities charged two men with the murder in the cold case killing of hip hop pioneer Jam Master J, who was gunned down in his Queens music studio in 2002 during what prosecutors describe as a drug related homicide. And as you guys look at the landscape of the country today, boy, has things changed since 2002. You figure you had 9-11 happen. The, the country still had uh, some semblance of unity. But now we are divided like ever before. And as you have the media pressing their their uh, agenda, um, people are drinking the full aid of, of what's being put out there. So be aware of that. It says that Ronald Tenard, Washington, 56, and Carl Jordan, 36, were slapped with murder charges for formally uh, storming into Jay's Jamaica Queen studio on October 30, 2002, ordering the other people on the ground at gunpoint and fatally shooting the 37-year-old Jay, whose real name was Jason Mazel, officials said. Um, persecutors with Mazel was targeting, targeted for cutting his killers out of the drug deal. High-profile murders of the Run DMC DJ went unsolved for years. Despite of his family's call for justice, the feds uh, did name Washington as an accomplice in the murder of 2007 seven, during his trial on the other New York robbery charges. So that is some sweet vindication for um, Jam Master Jay. And God bless his family. And hopefully we can get some closure on this here. But unfortunately, we cannot bring him back. And uh, I still remember him back in the 80s, all the great music and fun music they made, um, especially um, the epic Christmas hit on the Die Hard movie. Uh, but off into sports, some sports news. Um, LeBron is back too as well, um, striking like a bad um, case of the measles. We don't need that. Let's eradicate that. But LeBron James, he is being entrenching himself deeper in uh, the social uh, justice messaging. LeBron James over at Breitbart.com, I found an uh, article here, and it says LeBron James fake MAGA hat before playoff game make America arrest cops who kill Brianna uh, is a statement that he's making. And I have a question for Mr. Bert James. If you are in playoff mode, shouldn't you be focusing on the playoffs? Trying to eat a banana and ice skate at the same time is not something you should be trying to do. LeBron James has never thought twice about using his sports platform as a platform for politics. And Tuesday night was certainly no exception. Just before the Lakers uh, did battle with the Portland Trailblazer in game one of their round one Western Conference playoff matchup, LeBron James put on a fake MAGA hat with a social justice message about Breonna Taylor with the line through the words, great again. The hat read, make America arrest cops who kill Breonna Taylor. And I just love how these guys have millions of dollars. And it is so easy while they are protected by armed security to make these social justice statements while they are living good, eating the best Kobe steaks and living in the best places, having the best uh, spa dinners and dates. And they're trying to uh, preach to the American society, that is something we should not tolerate at all. And hopefully one day uh, they'll wake up. But on to the, the woke NBA ratings. They continue to, to sink, just like the MLB. And over at Breitbart 2 as well, the NBA and the MLB, two of the nation's biggest pro sports, have returned to TV after the COVID hiatus. However, the ratings show that the fans aren't at all interested in the new woke version of the leagues. Both basketball and baseball hit screens this summer filled with uh, peons to, to Black Lives Matter protests during the national anthem and, and an avalanche of slow, uh, slogaring and signed stadium floors and fields and player jerseys. And uh, you're in quicksand, along with the intrusions of this political activism on TV during the games. The two leagues have literally blasted social media with one woke proclamation after another. And so as they continue to slide off the slope, we will continue to make America great again. But on that note, that is all I have for this week, guys. Thank you so much for joining me, your host, Yanni, on the Midweek Review. And I will see you guys next week, same time, same channel. Have a great, great week. See you then.